Cavs have been on quite the journey over the last few years from the last great season, the last truly great individual season of LeBron James to LeBron James leaving right as he exits. I mean, like he's still really good, but he's no longer in his prime, right? Like it's very clear. The days of 2018 LeBron James being able to carry a team that has pretty much nothing around it to an NBA Finals, those days have ended. But he's still a very good player. But that was, I think, 2018, 2019 might have been the last great LeBron. Well, 2017, 2018 might have been the last great LeBron season. And since then, the Cavs have been in the shadow of LeBron. And a lot of people ask, why does that matter? What you do without LeBron, why do people care about it? Is this just LeBron hating? And we'll discuss why it's important for the Cavs to leave the shadow and how the Cavs have left the shadow of LeBron James. Let's talk about the Cavs. So in 2017, 2018, the Cavs kind of moved around the roster and did a lot of things to be able to win now, but also preserve their future. Um, This was also Kobe Altman had the job at that point, and he's had the job ever since. We know how 2017-2018 goes. We lose to the Warriors, J.R. Smith, all that stuff. Um, And then the offseason happens, and they draft Colin Sexton, who ends up being a solid player. Um, The year after that, or the season after that season, you know, the famous – the East runs through Cleveland. Uh, the Cavs went 19 and 63, um, were 14th in the Eastern Conference and fifth in the division, and then had another top 10 pick or a top five pick in which they drafted Darius Garland. Now, at the time, this Darius Garland pick was head scratching to a lot of people because a lot of people were bought in to Colin Sexton. And the dynamic before last season between Darius Garland and Colin Sexton was it was an attempt to recreate what the Portland Trailblazers created with um CJ and Dane. That was that was the hope, right? With with Colin and and Darius Garland. Now, ironically enough, the Cavs have something similar in that with Darius and Donovan, but they had to get rid of Colin to do it. Um, and the problem with those two was Colin was never a great distributor of the ball, and Darius was just going to be a late bloomer, right? He didn't play much in college. Um, he was injured most of his college. I think he played five college games. And, yes, we know Kyrie played, like, five games in college, came to the NBA, and he was great. Um, other players take more time, and Darius Garland was of the mode of player that take more time um, to get this right. Also, another interesting tidbit was that the Cats had fired uh, Ty Lue in the middle of the season and then hired John Beeline. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember John Beeline being the coach of Cavaliers? If you don't, you're not. it's not your fault because, well, I think he only coached 54 games for the Cavs in the COVID year. So he went 14 um, and 40. And then JB took over and went, what, five and six? Five and six. He went five and six. And then COVID happened, shut down the whole season. The Cavs were... I think the worst team in the Eastern Conference and they didn't get invited to the bubble, uh, so to say. So just kind of the same old story, right? LeBron left the last time um, for the heat and that was a more bitter departure. And it wasn't a bitter departure for the reasons that people always make it seem to be a bitter departure. Like, Part of it was some ugly stuff coming from certain fans, most definitely. But I think a lot of the bitterness about when LeBron went to the Heat and why that didn't exist when he went to the Lakers um, from Cleveland was he had promised the city of Cleveland that he was going to be the savior, right? That's what he promised. He actively promised on that. And then he left before he even got really close to doing it. And people felt betrayed by that. Um, The reason nobody felt betrayed when he left in 2017, 2018 was he delivered on the promise. He didn't say multiple championships. He said one. And then he got one. And he was out. He stayed two years after he got the one. Like, 
cool. You know what I mean? It, it became obvious that LeBron wasn't going to be enough to beat the Warriors. Like, it just is what it is. LeBron, uh, after that 2018 season, was never at his peak again. Like, maybe you could have won it in 2019. I doubt it. I doubt it. Um, but that is what a lot of the frustration was about. And also the frustration is when we don't have LeBron, we're not just bad. We're, like, horribly bad. Um, when LeBron left the first time, I think the Cavs had, like, two number one overall picks. Yeah, 2013, 2011, and 2014. Three number one overall picks in that span. We were that terrible. Um, so we're looking at this now. It's two years after LeBron left. And we stink. We stink. It's the same old story, right? Ty Lue's gone. Um, we just had John Beeline quit in the middle of the season. Now it's J.B. Bickerstaff in there, and we stink. We stink. We got the third overall pick. It's the same story with the same sorry Cavaliers, right? Like, that's what we were feeling at the time. Now, I think this is the year also – that you traded Dante Axum. Um, well, you traded for Dante Axum to get like a couple second round picks and you got rid of Jordan Clarkson. Again, like everybody from that era was just going away. In January, the Cavs were a part of a blockbuster deal headlined by James Harden. And what they got out of it was Jared Allen. Now, this is the trade that I think sent James Harden to the uh, Brooklyn Nets. And then it sent Jared Allen to the Cavs. That was a very important piece to this puzzle. Um, J.B. Bickerstaff was capped on as the head coach. That's a very important piece to this puzzle. Um, they didn't do great. 22 and 50. It's better than what they've been doing uh, previous years. But still 13th in the conference. Obviously, you didn't um, make the playoffs. But you played good. And the word around this team was scrappy basketball. The Cavs were very, very scrappy um, it, it, <laughs> in this time period, if you remember it correctly. But you still stunk. Now, you took Isaac Okoro fifth overall. So it's the third top five pick. Well, the second top five pick. And then you'll end up with the third top five pick in three years. It feels very familiar. But then you draft Evan Mobley. And that changes things. You go 44 and 38 and a disappointing ending to the season. And what we realized after the end of last season was a couple things. One, this team needed more a star score, right? Like Darius Garland is a good two, but he's a two. We need a number one. So we needed a number one score. We needed another guy to compliment Darius Garland. We need another guy that could pass, dribble, and shoot. Donovan Mitchell becomes available. The whole crazy situation where how he almost gets to New York and all of that happens, and he ends up in Cleveland. That's big. That's big. Evan Mobley gets selected in Cleveland, develops well. They make some moves. He blossoms. All of a sudden, the Cavs now are an over 500 team. Great. Bad news is that the East got much better in that down period between the last Le LeBron Cav year and this year. So 44 and 38 legitimately might have been good enough to get you like the five seed um, a few years ago. It put you in the play -in, and you lost to the Nets and then you lost to the Hawks and then you lost out of the playoffs. So you did not qualify for the playoffs, only the play -in. Unfortunate. But you kept JB. Um Kobe Altman got upgraded to president instead of general manager. So you got more control, more stability. And that's important because for a while, the rap on Dan Gilbert was that he refuses to keep general managers. Right. Um, he, he refused to keep uh, Griff. He let Griff go to uh, New Orleans like he did not want to keep general managers. Kobe comes around, he does a decent job, he gets promoted to president, and all of a sudden now we're like, okay, stability. We got stability. That stability walks its way into a great relationship with Utah uh, and the Boston Celtics. Well, not the Boston Celtics, but the Boston Celtics' former GM. That Those things kind of coincide 
to being able to trade for Donovan Mitchell. Again, stability is one of the key uh, factors in this story. And then the Cavs make that big trade, and now they're sitting at a much better place, ready to get their highest seeding since, well, their first playoff qualification, like the first time they've ever qualified for the playoffs um, in a very long time, I think, since the Mark Price Cavaliers without LeBron James on the roster. And why is that important that the Cavs achieve something with LeBron? Well, because one, LeBron does not play for the Cavs anymore. That's why it's important. And two, LeBron wasn't ever always going to play for the Cavs. Like, you know, it, this is the same thing with Jordan and uh, Chicago, where the Bulls want to achieve stuff outside of Michael Jordan because they want to continue to have success. Michael Jordan only played in the 90s and a couple years in the early 2000s, but he was only on the Bulls in the 90s. If you don't have Michael Jordan on your team and all your success is linked to Michael Jordan, you're never going to be successful again without Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan can't play basketball forever. Same thing with LeBron. LeBron can't play basketball forever. And he won't be playing basketball in Cleveland forever. We know this. He's left. We have to achieve stuff outside of him. This is the first time in a very long time that the Cavs are set for massive success without LeBron James. Or at least sizable, like respectable success. This is a team that's going to be probably a top four seed. A team that's going to be seen as a contender. We haven't said that about the Cavs since Michael Jordan hit the shot. We really haven't. Um, so that's why. All of this is important. It's not in spite of LeBron. It's not to disrespect LeBron. It's to be able to build past having LeBron on the roster. And that's what we've been striving for, quite frankly, for the last 23 years. Hmm, see what I did there? Uh, but that's it for today's show. Y'all tell me what you think in the comment section down below. Have a great day. Have a good night.